This video is about the peritoneum, in my opinion one of the better peri, ranking above scope but below mason. So what is it? Well the peritoneum is a membrane that's found in the abdomen and is composed of two layers. The parietal peritoneum lines the inside of the body cavity, the visceral peritoneum lines the outside of the organs. Between these layers is the peritoneal cavity, and this is where we find that serous fluid that allows those layers to glide past each other. This is important as it allows the organs to move inside the abdomen without stitching to the body wall. Now those are the main peritoneal points, but to really understand the peritoneum, we need to draw it out. So, let's imagine we're looking at a sagittal view of the abdominal cavity. We'll have the anterior aspect here, the posterior aspect here, and inside of this space, we need to add our abdominal organs. So at the top, we'll have the liver. Posteriorly, we'll have structures like the pancreas and aorta. And then we need to add the great and good of the gastrointestinal tract, so things like the stomach, the large intestine, and the small intestine. We also need to add our pelvic viscera, and for this video, we'll assume this is a male patient, so I'll just add the bladder and the rectum. Next, we need to add our peritoneal layers. Now, although we talked about the peritoneum as having two very separate layers, in reality, the parietal and visceral peritoneum are continuous with one another. So, although the anterior abdominal wall is lined by parietal peritoneum, eventually this membrane will continue to cover the liver and the bladder. As soon as it covers those organs, it becomes visceral peritoneum. As it moved back onto the body wall, it becomes parietal again. Now if you're drawing along, you may have noticed that I've left some small gaps in the peritoneum. Make sure you leave these in, and we'll come back to why we have them later on. Some of the organs lie close to the body wall, so it's easy for that peritoneum to cover them. But what about those structures in the middle of the abdominal cavity? Well, to reach these, the membranes have to leave the body wall before almost completely enveloping the organ. This creates a double-layered membrane that tethers the organ to the body wall, as well as providing a route for blood vessels and lymphatic drainage. Generally, these are known as mesenteries, although the one to the colon is specifically referred to as the mesocolon. These different arrangements for peritoneum allow us to split the organs into two different groups. Some of them only have peritoneum on one aspect and sort of lie behind it. These organs will be retroperitoneal. Other organs are almost fully enveloped by peritoneum and are known as intraperitoneal organs. In this video I won't be running through which organ is in which group, but just be aware that retroperitoneal organs are held in place by the peritoneum, whereas intraperitoneal organs are relatively free to move around. The peritoneal membranes that cover an organ don't always originate from the body wall. Sometimes they come from another organ. So, for example, the visceral peritoneum of the liver continues inferiorly to surround the stomach. This creates a membrane between the two organs known as the lesser omentum. The visceral peritoneum of the stomach is then continuous with the membrane that surrounds the colon. However, instead of passing directly to the colon, it does something odd. Both layers overshoot completely, plunging down into the abdomen before working their way back up toward the colon. Eventually, these four layers fuse together to create a multi-layered structure known as the greater omentum. The greater omentum is this weird semi-sentient flap that overlies the lower abdominal viscera. Although often left out of anatomical illustrations, if you ever open up an abdomen, it's bound to be the first thing you see. As mysterious as it is ubiquitous, the greater omentum is thought to have a role in limiting intraperitoneal infections, and is often found wrapped around sites of disease or trauma. Now we've finished our drawing of the peritoneum, there's just a few more details I'd like to point out. First, we can see that the lesser omentum, greater omentum, and the mesotolon enclose a portion of the peritoneal cavity. This region is the lesser sac. The rest of the space outside of this is the greater sac. As the membranes wrap around the viscera, they also create various pouches and spaces, such as this one here between the rectum and the bladder. This is known as the recto pouch. 
In women, the uterus would fit between these structures, creating two pouches, a vetro-uterine anteriorly and a recto-uterine posteriorly. These pouches can be important clinically, as any fluid in the abdomen will collect here in an upright patient. The final thing to mention is that although the peritoneal layers are very similar, there is one important difference, and that's their nerve supply. The visceral peritoneum receives autonomic innervation, and the parietal peritoneum receives somatic innervation. This means a problem in an organ that's irritating the visceral peritoneum will prevent with diffuse, unlocalized pain. But as that problem spreads and develops to irritate the parietal peritoneum, that pain will become sharp and localized. So that's an introduction to the peritoneal membranes. If you have any questions or problems, please just get in touch. But otherwise, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.